So we are about to, the reason I say this is an adventure, we're about to embark onto this, we're now we're leaving the realm of uh, the protection of USITT guidelines, okay? Uh, so uh, we're now going to learn how to, you, you hopefully you get how to do system diagrams now, because I've had you do a few now. Um, hopefully you, you generally understand that practice. You'll get better at it the more you do it, and you won't, we won't see some of these mistakes we're seeing now. But, uh, but the nice thing about that is we have those guidelines uh, on how, so how the symbols should look and how this should go. The, from here on out, uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to create different drawings for sound systems that there aren't guidelines like that for. So we're kind of making up our own rules here. Okay, but when in doubt, do what I said, okay? So pay extra attention to what I say to do because you're not going to have that, that option of like, oh, you didn't quite remember what Jason said. What does the official industry standard guidelines tell us to do on this? Because those don't exist for the things I'm about to teach you. The things that, that you're, I'm about to teach you, the only place you will hear about them is from me telling you how to do them. Okay, there's no book that's going to tell you this. There's no standard document out there that's going to tell you this. You're only going to get it from me. So pay extra attention to what I'm saying because I want you to do what I say. Okay? Uh, so what we're going to talk about right now is how do we, in fact, I think I, I titled this, um, this section of the course, what did I call this? Um, I call this navigating and drafting in architectural drawings. Okay, so uh, what I mean by that is we're not the only people that use AutoCAD in theater, uh, and you know the TDs will will draw the set and the theater in AutoCAD, and and some of the documentation that we have to do involves drawing things on top of these architectural drawings of of the theatrical space. Okay, uh, and that naturally lends itself to some interesting problems for us, okay, uh, that I want to help, sure ma help make sure we understand. So, by the way, if you don't already know how to do this, uh, if you want to get copies of the theaters that, that are here at school, you can get those by going to uh, SMB uh, DP server. Then you put in your username and password, um, which let me pause. Okay, so uh, remember when we talked about this concept of the origin in AutoCAD, which is the, what we call the UCS, the Universal Coordinate System, which is, that is, where is zero in our drawing? Okay, zero has to be somewhere and then everything is drawn relative to zero. Well, where is zero in a drawing like this? There is actually, uh, and this is dictated by industry practice, uh, probably even a USITT standard. Uh, and there's, th so there's this concept of, there are two special lines when you draw a theater. And those special lines are a center line and a plaster line. Okay, those are two magic lines. Okay, and everything in an architectural drawing like this for the theater is going to be drawn relative to the intersection of those two lines, the intersection of the center line and the plaster line. So that intersection point of center line and plaster line, that's zero comma zero in AutoCAD. Okay, uh, so let me show you where those lines are. So here is the center line of this ground plan. Okay, in fact, it even has a label here, CL, for center line. This is supposed to be the, the line that goes straight down the center of the room. Okay, the plaster line is a line, it's a, it's another, it's a phantom line that, so here's a little label, it says plaster line and it calls out to this line right here, this magenta line. What's special about that line? Well, if you notice, 
it lines up with the upstage edge of the proscenium. So in this case, this is a proscenium theater. There is this proscenium arch between the stage and the audience. You know, it's the hole that's cut out of the fourth wall. <laughs> okay, uh, and the upstage edge of that wall that has the hole in it is the plaster line in a proscenium theater. Okay, uh, in other theaters, you know, if it's a thrust theater, it, it, it might be different. If it's a theater in the round. You're going to have two center lines, <laughs> basically. Uh, so it'll be there, there are exceptions to these rules, but even in the thrust theater, usually you'll get that drawing, and it'll say, "Here is the plaster line, and here is the center line." So if I go back to uh, my source files here, um, I can show you a couple other examples. Um, in fact, I'm just going to take, this might be dangerous, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to take this whole folder and copy it into my desktop. How long will that take? Oh, not too bad. Okay, so here is that folder. Let's take a look at some other examples here. So if we look at Friedman Theater, for example, which is currently being Converted. It won't look like this next time you see it, but it looks like this now. Everybody okay? You guys with me? You don't need to worry about that right now. Yeah, that's not part of what we're talking about today. So uh, here's one here. So this is the ground plan view of what the Friedman Theater currently looks like. It's a thrust type stage that we've kind of hybrid hybridized into a halfway proscenium, but again, you have a center line. And then if you notice, there is a label here for a plaster line, even though this is not a proscenium theater. So, and that plaster line is this little dashed line there, and it intersects not with any particular <laughs> architecture, okay? There is this little uh, track wall here that comes in, uh, and they've just kind of decided that the plaster line is kind of around the center of that. Uh, and I, there does, there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to that that I can tell. That's just someone decided this is the line that we're going to call plaster line. It doesn't matter. You don't have to figure out what the plaster line is. You just have to use the plaster line that was used by the person who drew this drawing. Okay? Because you are not going to be the person that draws the theater. Okay? Someone else is going to do that. Uh, I've never had to draw the theater myself. Sometimes I've had to fix some errors in the drawing of the theater because usually these are drawn by technical directors. And technical directors are primarily concerned with the stage. They're not very interested in the seats or the audience because they don't really usually have to do anything out there. They have to put all their scenery and rigging and everything up over the stage. So the stage area is usually pretty accurate when you get that drawing from a TD. But there's quite often there will be errors in the audience area, if they drew the audience area at all. Sometimes they don't even draw the audience area because uh, they just don't care about it. But we care a lot about it, okay? Because that's where everything we do happens <laughs> is out in the audience because that's where the ears are. <laughs> the ears are in the seats. Uh, so we want that information and we need that information to be accurate. So Sometimes I'll get drawings from a TD that's like, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's exactly the slope of those seats. For example, the drawing you get, here's, let me uh, pull up the Steven Center drawing uh, that is on the server. And this is, this is the official CAD drawing of the Steven Center. Here's the problem. That is not what the balcony in Stevens Center looks like. <laughs> there are a lot of things wrong with that one. First of all, there are not enough rows. There are more rows in that balcony than are drawn in this drawing. Okay? That's the first thing wrong with this, is this balcony goes further back than this. This booth, this, this spot booth here, is not lined up vertically with the booth downstairs. 
it's further back. Okay, so that's so there there are more rows, but also this is not the slope. <laughs> that is it, that balcony does not angle that way. It's not that steep. It's steep. It is. If you've ever been in the balcony of Stevens Center, you're walking down those stairs. It's like I feel like I'm going to fall to my death. Okay, uh, so it is definitely a steep. Uh, thing, but it is not that steep. Okay, so this is wrong, flat out wrong, <laughs> and that's a huge problem for us because we have to figure out how to point, how to get sound up there, and it's drawn incorrectly. So I went in one time and fixed it, and so I have a drawing of Stevens Center that I'm going to share with you today, that I fixed, <laughs> that is correct. I went in and measured the balcony. And in fact, I, ha I kind of conned a, uh, I, I, I conned a uh, salesperson, uh, a, uh, a point cloud scanner salesperson, into doing a product demo <laughs> at the Stevens Center of, of their, their 3D scanner <laughs> and got him to scan the Stevens Center as a demo for me because we were thinking of buying one, kind of. Eventually, we did buy one, but it was a long time after that person didn't even work at the company anymore. But so I, I don't feel so bad about it. But but he did he agreed to do it. Um, so he scanned it, and that's what I, I used that scan and I, I sliced it and then superimposed it upon this drawing, and I went okay yeah I I've been feeling like for years that this is not right, and now I've confirmed it it's not right. So I fixed it. Um, so every once in a while you might have to do that, but usually you're not going to be drawing the theater from scratch, okay? But you do have to figure out how to navigate this thing. So if we look at the Stevens Center uh, ground plan, here's the ground plan. Here's your two magic lines, center line, plaster line. And they're labeled, right? Plaster line, call out to that. Center line, that's like the universal symbol for center line. OK, if we look at. Uh, Let's look at the Catawba Theater. So here's a ground plan of Catawba. So notice that we don't have a plaster line in this case, but we do have two center lines. We got a center line here and a center line there. So the origin for this file, uh, you know, would everything would be relative to that point. Okay. So every theater is going to come into you looking a little bit different. Uh, one thing to notice about this, again, this is the official ground plan of the Stevens Center. What do you notice about this that is concerning? It is missing the entire audience section, which is kind of a problem for us, right? Not a problem for the TD because they don't need it, right? They don't need that information, so why would they waste time drawing it when they don't need it? Um, but we need it. <laughs> so once again, I took this drawing and I fixed it. I drew the audience section because uh, like I need that information. That's important to me. Okay, and I keep trying to get them to like I, I've sent my drawings to the TD department before. Be like, okay, use this, okay, because I fixed it. This one's right, and I can't get them to fix it. I don't know why, because they just don't care. I guess uh, doesn't matter because I'm going to give you the right one and then you can use it. Okay, uh, so let's go back here to the DeMille drawing. Okay, so here it is. So how do I navigate this thing? Well, for, if you have this ground plan and section as separate files, then you can put your UCS origin at that intersection of centerline, plasterline in both files. In the section view, the origin is the plasterline and the stage. In other words, zero for Z, the Z axis, which is up in the air, that is usually the stage level, right? The floor of the stage is zero, okay? Uh, but in a drawing like this, where they are in the same file, uh, you kind of are going to have to m keep moving that UCS around a little bit in order to figure things out. So let me show you how to do that. So uh, if I want to just place my XY, my UCS, at the center line and plaster line in this drawing so that I could then work with it, uh, I will just type the, the command UCS. 
and it says specify the origin. So I'm going to zoom in here and that's my spot, okay? Center line, plaster line. Notice how I'm snapping to that intersection. The reason I'm snapping to that intersection is I have that particular object snap turned on right now. So look at this. If I, if I right click on here, I have uh, intersection turned on. So that, I, that allows me to snap to the intersection of two lines, which really helps me in doing this. So UCS specify origin. Put it right there. Now the next thing it asks me is specify a, pl a point on the x-axis. So this is zero. You're now, or you're now at zero, but where does x go? Okay. Uh, depends is the answer to that question. Okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> it depends. It depends on a lot of things. So, uh, if I were king of the forest and could do anything I wanted, X would be always out towards the audience. And Y would be off stage left. But I'm not king of the forest and I can't always get what I want. So I usually start there, but when next year I'm gonna teach you Ease, for example, and Ease wants something slightly different. Okay, I think, I believe Ease wants X off the stage left and Y pointing up stage uh, for it to be happy. Um, doesn't matter. So whatever you need, because you're going to interrogate this drawing to get those coordinates out of it for various purposes. And you just need to orient this UCS in whatever direction you need in order for those coordinates to be in the format you need them to be. Okay? So for, for my purposes today, I'm just going to say I want X pointed out of the audience. So I'm just going to snap now to uh, this center line. Now, why am I, snap, why am I able to snap on that line? Yeah, because it's, you know, first of all, I have I have uh, polar uh, tracking turned on, which allows me to snap to 90 degree angle, so that helps. Um, and it'll find that line and show, oh, you want to do it there, because it's doing a polar snap to that. So I'll say, yes, X goes there, and now it says, where do you want Y to be? I want Y to go this way. And then I click. Uh, no, I mean, that, will, uh, that has to be a 90 degree angle, but Y could, if X is pointing out to the audience, you could have it point, you could have Y going a couple different places. So let me show you. If I say this is zero, X goes here, well, Y could go there, Y could go upstage there. So it's just like, do I want it to go left or right, you know? So I want it to go that way. So there we go. So now what's interesting about this is if I then, No, I did. It's it's there. This is zero zero. So I'll show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw uh, a point. I'm just gonna type the word point. Specify a point. I'm gonna do it here, which is at the intersection of these two lines. And you can't see the point. Why can't you see the point? Because I got to change my point style. Because I'm not using my template. You should add this to your template, by the way. A point style that makes some sense. Uh, I like this one. <laughs> okay. So that's my point. Now look, I can select that and I can snap to it. Now look where my coordinates are down here on the bottom right. Zero comma zero comma zero. I did it. <laughs> so you always want to verify that it worked. So depending on what your preferences are set to in AutoCAD, even though you put the UCS there, it doesn't mean that that's where the UCS symbol is going to show up on your screen. So my UCS symbol is still showing up in the bottom left, but AutoCAD knows that zero is at that point, which means now every place I measure is going to be relative to that. So if I want to know, like, where is this spot? Where's the edge of that stage there? I can snap to that node, and I know it is six feet nine inches downstage and 16 feet two and five eighths inches stage left. That's where that spot is. Uh, why is that helpful information? Uh, because when eventually when I teach you ease, you will need that information. 
because you're going to need to know where to draw the seats and where to draw the stage and all of that, and you'll need to get that information out of here. Um, but the other thing that helps is let's, well, I'll get to that later, is eventually you're going to be plotting loudspeakers on here, and you want to know where those need to be and where they need to point. And you want to be able to interrogate your drawing later when you go into the space and actually get that information so you can make sure that the loudspeaker is placed in the correct location. So you put it in the drawing, and then when you go into the real life and try to hang that loudspeaker, you want to be able to verify that you put it in the right place. So you want to be able to find that spot and say, okay, this is supposed to be 16 feet up off the stage, according to CAD, because CAD told me that. Let's get a tape and measure, is it actually 16 feet up off the stage? Because if it's not, then all the work that you did to figure out where that last figure needed to be just gets thrown out the window because you're going to hang it in a different spot and it's going to behave differently in that spot, okay? So now I've got it, I can now interrogate any spot in this ground plan and I will know where that place is relative to that intersection of center line and plaster line. Now what about the section view? So the section view, this is, this is what the theater would look like if you used the center line as a big knife and cut the building in half on the center line and then looked at it from the side. That's what the section view is. is this is looking at the building from the side with it cut in half at the center line. Uh, so this is what we got. Now, uh, if I wanted to find out where these points are, I'm going to need to remove my UCS again. Because if I want to find out like where what a bit of information would be really helpful to me is where is this back row? How high is that back row? I'd like to know that. So if I snap to that and look in, it, it claims that it is some ridiculously big negative number. <laughs> Which that can't possibly be right. Be <laughs> Why is it saying that? My zero point is based on the ground plan right now, and I'm looking at the section. So i got to move it. So I'm going to type UCS, and I'm going to reposition my UCS. So in this case, on a section, zero is the intersection line of the stage floor and the plaster line. So that's where I'm snapping right now. And again, it says, where is X? And if I were king of the forest, X would be pointed out to the audience. And then in re in in, in a perfect 3D space, up from the stage would be Z, right? Because it's, you know, X, Y, Z goes up. Z is the up axis. Um, in fact, there's this, anybody ever heard of ZFX Flying Company? So they're, they're a company that, that, you know, flies actors around stage. So the name of their company is ZFX, because Z means up, <laughs> right? Right? You never, if you never knew that, now you know. It's, they're trying to be clever, because Z in theater means up. <laughs> so they are a, their company is called ZFX, which means we are in the business of going up as an effect. <laughs> that's, that's a fancy way of saying we, f we make things fly in the air, right? Okay, so you don't really want just because uh, in a 2D drawing, which is what this is, you don't have a z-axis, technically, right? Because it's a two-dimensional drawing, there is no z. And it is possible in AutoCAD to make this be a z, but I would recommend against that. So when you're putting your UCS into a section drawing, just have y stand in place of z, okay? No problem, you just have to remember that that when you're looking for a, the Z value, look for Y in the section, okay? So it says, where is X, Y? Where's Y? I'm gonna say Y goes up here. Now I've got it. And now that means if I do wanna find out where that back row is, I can snap to there, and now it says it's seven feet, nine and a half inches up off of the stage. That sounds reasonable, right? That makes some sense, okay? So hopefully you can kind of see now how to navigate that and how to put this, how to sort this stuff out. So what do we need these drawings for? Primarily, we use the ground plan and section 
to plot our loudspeaker locations. Okay, so the project you're going to do this week is you're going to create a loudspeaker plot. And there are two bits of information we're looking for. Where do the loudspeakers go? And where do they point? Those are the two important information, bits of information. Where does it go? And where does it point? Because if you get those things wrong, then they're not going to do what you want them to do. If you put your center cluster in the wrong place and you point it at the ceiling, it's not going to do what you thought it was going to do. That's not to say that that's wrong. Maybe that's what you want. But if that wasn't what you want, and you don't specify in the drawing where this thing points, it could just be pointed anywhere. right? When you could show up there, and it's like it's pointed in the wrong spot because you didn't specify. So where does it go? Where does it point? Tho that's the information we're looking for here. No more, no less. Okay. This, is, this drawing is not about how it gets there. In the, in the loudspeaker plot, you're not plotting how the loudspeaker gets to that location. That would be a rigging diagram, which we will learn how to do. Rigging diagram is, okay, how do I get it to that place and make sure it stays there? That's what rigging is all about, is how do I hang things or attach things to places in theaters without them falling down? Okay. That is not what this drawing is about. Okay, we're not trying to sh sh show how the loudspeakers get to that place. We're just saying this is where they should go, and this is where we should point them. How they get there is a problem for another day and another drawing. Okay, someone else figures that out, or maybe it's you. Maybe you figure that out, but you document that somewhere else. Okay, if you start getting into the mechanics of how it gets there then this drawing be will become very confusing to read. Okay? And because this is about where does it go and where does it point, and not about how does it get there, it's not super important that the symbol that represents the loudspeaker, it's not super important that that be in scale, at least in my opinion. Okay? If drawing it in scale like if the size of the box that you draw that represents the loudspeaker is the actual size, like it is representing the size that it would be in that space, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that unless drawing it in scale means you can't see it on the drawing. So if it's a loudspeaker that's like this big, if it's a little Meyer MM4 or something, and you draw that in scale and put it in an enormous theater like the Stevens Center, you won't see it. You won't see that box. And you will miss the important information. The important information is, where do I want that little tiny thing to go? So I would much rather see the box be a little bit larger on the drawing if it makes it easier for me to figure out where to put it when I have to load the show in. right? Because again, the information on how does it get there, that's a different problem. That's a rigging diagram. And you would do a rigging diagram of, how do I get that little MM4 to be in that spot? That's going to require cutting a hole in something. I have to attach this bracket to it. I got to put two screws into the deck. You know, that's what the rigging diagram is all about. So don't allow yourself to go down that rabbit hole of, ooh, I've got to like draw every little curve and corner of this box in perfect scale and detail uh, when I put it in the loudspeaker plot. Because you could waste a ton of time on that. And then you zoom this thing out and try to look at it, and all, all your work just kind of vanishes because you can't see it at that view. Okay? Now, there are varied opinions out there in the world about this subject. There are other people who think it is important to have the loudspeakers in scale on that drawing. I'm just not one of those people. Okay? Uh, if you ever work for one of those people, then do what they say because they're your boss. Okay? But right now, I'm your boss. And I, I'm saying it doesn't matter, OK? Someday in your world it might matter. It doesn't matter to me, because I'm going to make you do a different drawing about how does it get there, OK? So let's take a look at how we might do this. So I'm going to draw a center cluster, just for fun. And I'm going to make up the location coordinates right now, because I don't have that reference. Normally what you would do 
is you would have something like Ease or maybe Array Calc from BNB or Map from Meyer or any of these other tools that help you figure out where does the loudspeaker go and where do you point it. So however you figure that information out is not important for our conversation today. Our conversation today is about how do you draw it once you have that information. Okay, so let's just assume we got that information somehow. We know where to put the loudspeaker, we know where to point it, we just have to document that in here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do uh, is I wanna create a new layer here for myself um, called sound. And then I'm gonna switch to that layer, make that the active layer, okay? And then I'm just gonna draw something. So I have, um, I'm gonna make myself a little rectangle that represents my loudspeaker. And again, it does not particularly matter what size it is. It's what's more important is that can I see it on the drawing, <laughs> okay? So I'm just gonna kind of arbitrarily draw an approximate shape of what this thing looks like, okay? So it looks about like that. It's taller than it is wide. Um, and that is a size that I can see on the drawing, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna hatch it to a solid. And the color is gonna be by layer. So I'll select the boundary, which will be that. There we go. Okay, there's my loudspeaker. It's no more complicated than that. That is the level of detail you need. <laughs> a box that is solid and large enough to see on the drawing, okay? Uh, as I say, if you wanna get more detail than that, knock yourself out, but don't do that uh, at to in a way that would sacrifice your ability to see where it is on the drawing. <laughs> don't let yourself make that compromise because that is one of the two purposes of, the, of this drawing, to see where the loudspeakers go. So, all right, <coughs> here it is. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna position it. Now, my rule of thumb is the, the position of it is based on the front center of the loudspeaker. So figuring out where it goes, it's all about the front of that box where the drivers are in the center of that. That is a somewhat arbitrary decision on my part, but that's something that I know that I can measure and verify in the real world. I can find that spot in the real world, the front center edge of this thing. I can't find the middle, the geometric center of the box. I can't find that in real life because I would have to take apart the loudspeaker to find that spot and make sure that that's where it is, right? I, I'm not gonna do that. So I'd rather position these based on a, a point that I know I can measure in real life, okay? And I know I can measure in real life the front center of the box. So there it is. So if I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna snap to the front center of the box. And I'm gonna put this in some place. So I am gonna put it, uh, let's see. I'm gonna put it 18 feet up in the air. So, uh, here's what I'm gonna do, just to give myself a reference point. I'm gonna specify a point here that is zero on the X comma 18 feet on the, on the vertical. And I'm gonna just draw that out here so I can see where that spot is. That just gives me a point, point of reference. And now I can move this thing to that spot here. Then the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself another line that uh, I'm gonna put this thing three feet out on the X. So I'm gonna do three comma zero oops, zero, and then, oh, I saw, that was three inches, not three feet. So this is the other thing that happens when you get a file from the TD, it's usually in inches, okay? So in the next 
spot, next, when I do this in a minute, I'll show you how to scale that, okay? So that's because that's trip limit up here. So I'm going to do line, specify for first point, z, uh, three feet comma zero. There we go. And I'm going to plot that straight up. Now I get an intersection point. You see that? So now I can take my loudspeaker and I'm going to say, I want it there. That's my place, okay? And now I can get rid of my reference points here. So that's where it goes. Now I need to replicate that on my ground plan. I need to replicate that spot in the ground plan. So how do I do that? Well, I know, because I am going to make a note of that, that this thing is located at 3 feet on the x, 18 feet on the z, and 0 on the y, in this case. It's a center cluster, so I'm going to position it, center it on the center line of the theater. So I know that y is going to be 0. I just really need, for the purpose of the ground plan, that x is going to be 3 feet. Okay? So I'm going to just take this symbol. I'm going to copy it. Specify this, this center line, or this midpoint. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to position it just here on the center line of the, the theater. And then I'm going to give myself a little reference. I'm going to reposition my UCS back to my intersection of center line, plaster line, x, y. And now I'm going to draw myself a little line that is 3 feet, comma, 0. So I have a reference. Okay, that's my spot. So now I can take this thing and move it to there. See that? So now I've got it in lined up. It's in the same spot in both drawings. I'm going to verify that using a construction line. So a construction line is this little symbol here that has the two arrows on it. And the command for that is X line. What's cool about a construction line is it's an infinite line. So it's meant to be a reference. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to say specify that that center point, that midpoint, and I'm going to have it go in that direction. Now this is a line that goes on forever. See that? And that just allows me to verify that these are in the same spot. If I've done this correctly, then both boxes, the front edge of them, should be lined up with this construction line. Because that construction line is at three feet on the X. And they are. They are lined up. You see that? Yay! So now I can get rid of that. Now the only other thing I need to do is uh, I need to now figure out the where does it point part of this equation, right? I've got the where does it go. Now I need to figure out the where does it point. Well, uh, usually you're going to have that information. That'll, that'll come out of whatever your modeling program was in the form of you know, XYZ coordinate of a surface that this thing intersected with. Like you draw an imaginary line straight out of the middle of the thing. Eventually it's going to hit something. Okay, And where is the place where it hits? Okay. So you'll get that information, and what I like to do is just draw a point at that spot. So let's say that point was here. You know, I got those coordinates out of my whatever, and there's the point. That's where this thing needs to aim. So I'm going to draw a big X with a circle through it at that spot, and now I can rotate this loudspeaker so it's pointed that direction. So I'm going to use my rotate command, which is RO for rotate. And if yet, I don't think I've taught you guys this one before, have I? So here you go, rotate. So the first thing it says is select objects. So I'm going to select both the box and the hatch of my loudspeaker, just the one in section view for now, and then hit enter. Specify the base point. The base point is the, basically the axis of rotation. So what is the spot around which this thing will rotate? I want this to be the insertion point of the loudspeaker, which is right there. Now it says rotation angle. See that? So now I can say, where is the rotation angle? 
I'm just going to snap it to that spot. Now look, it's pointed there. Now what I can do is just actually draw a line from that midpoint to that point and say that is where it goes. <laughs> okay? This is where it goes, this is where it points. And I got a big X with a circle on the seats. Because again, you go into the real world and you're gonna hang this thing in real life. You're gonna put it in that spot and you're gonna aim it, and you gotta be able to say, okay, how do I know where this thing goes? Yeah, you could dimension out the angle, the actual pitch of that angle. You could put that as, an, as, a, as a dimension. Some people like to do that. In my case, it's like sometimes you get yourself into the theater and you can't quite get the loudspeaker exactly in that spot for whatever reason. There's a pipe in the way. There's something you didn't know about. You have to kind of tweak it. But the where does it point is still important to you. You still want it pointed at that spot, even if you had to move it six inches in one direction. So it, for me, it's less about is that angle correct than it is about is it pointed in the right place. And so it's easy for me to kind of be up there in the air with this thing and go, it's supposed to hit that chair in the theater because there's a big X. I can see it's like, OK. I can just look and see where that is. Now, if I want to re really verify it, I can get a little laser dot, stick it on. I sometimes will do this with a flashlight, even. You just get a, a good high power flashlight, put it perpendicular to the front of the last week, and just go <laughs> until you see the light show up on the spot on the floor where your drawing says it's supposed to go. Right? And then you're good. You got it. That's usually a good place to start for me. And then later, when you got some quiet time and you have your analysis equipment and you can actually measure, this, you might end up tweaking that angle to get it more perfect, OK? Uh, so that's it. Now then, the other thing you're going to want to do is write some text next to this that identifies this loudspeaker, OK? And whatever you write here should be exactly the same thing you wrote in your system diagram, exactly word for word, with no omissions, additions, or abbreviations so that there is no confusion that this box in this drawing represents this box on my system diagram. Okay, That's super important. Uh, when you get to the ground plan view, same deal. Uh, I have to put the aim point here. So best, easiest thing to do would be to draw a construction line up from here. And then I can see where that spot is here on the ground plan, see? So now all I have to do is put a point. I don't have to rotate this thing because it's already kind of oriented that direction. I'm going to put it there and then draw myself a line from there to there. There you go. That's where it points in ground plan view and section view. Then you just repeat that process over and over again for as many last speakers as you have. Okay? Draw a box, put the box in the right spot. Drop a point somewhere on the seats where this thing has to aim, rotate it to that spot, draw a line, add the label. Rinse and repeat <laughs> over and over and over again. Okay? So let's talk about the uh, assignment. So if we go here to assignments, actually, you'll, you'll see it in modules. You'll see I have a last week or plot assignment. What does that last week or plot assignment look like? you might ask. Here it is. So for this assignment, you are going to create a loudspeaker plot for these loudspeakers. Okay? So what I have given you is you have the label that came off of the, the system diagram. So there is a loudspeaker in the system diagram that has this label next to it. Center, cluster, top, DMB, Q7. This is where it goes. X, Y, Z. This is where it points, X, Y, Z. You should be able to plug those coordinates into the drawing, plop the loudspeaker at the location, plop a point at the aim point, rotate, draw a line. Take that label, put it in there. Okay? You're going to do this using the Stevens Center. But it's going to be my Stevens Center drawing, which is both accurate and contains the audience area. So it's right here. You just click that link, and you'll download it. Let me show you what this looks like. Do, 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 do. 
And it's gonna, if it's going to give you this error, this open, you know, it just means that there was some references that the TD made to some, like, it's probably like an, uh, I don't know, logo or something that it probably can't find. So I'm just going to say ignore. There it is. So what you will notice here, that is what the balcony actually does. <laughs> okay? That is how the balcony really looks. Uh, and then you'll notice I have also drawn the audience area. And I, ha I have two ground plans here. I have a ground plan for the orchestra level and then a second ground plan for the balcony level that shows you where the balcony goes. Okay? So in some cases, I've specified loudspeakers that go in the balcony. So you should probably draw those on the balcony ground plan as opposed to the orchestra level one. Um, it's up to you, uh, because that's visible in both views. So you can decide where you want to put that one. I'm not going to specify that. Uh, OK, let me show you quickly how to scale this drawing. Because right, you see how it's in feet and inches, which is not the coordinates I gave you. I gave you decimal feet. See that? So how am I going to do this? Because the numbers I gave you are not the numbers you can plug into CAD. Best thing to do would be to scale the drawing to those units, OK? So let me show you how to do that. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my units. So type command units. Oops, I said unite. Un units. Or you can do format units from the menu. And I'm going to switch this from architectural to decimal. OK? And so now it's in decimal, but it's decimal inches. So one unit equals an inch in decimal. I just want to scale this so that one unit equals a foot. So I'm going to type the word scale. It says select objects. I'm going to say all. Select all. Hit enter again. Specified base point. Base point doesn't really matter in the context of scaling this because you're going to move all of it. So I'm just going to type 0, 0, wherever that happens to be right now. It doesn't matter to me. 0, 0. It says specify scale factor. What would be my scale factor? 1 12th, right? Because there are 12 inches in a foot, and I currently have inches. I want feet. So I want to take those, for every 12 inches I have, I want that to become one unit. So my scale factor will be 1 divided by 12, 1 slash 12. And I hit Enter. And whoa, this drawing just got a heck of a lot smaller, right? Because I just squished 12 units into one unit. So now I can just say zoom extents. And there we go. And now I'm in decimal feet, which means uh, I can now take my UCS and I can put it Here's my plaster line. You can see it there, right? X goes out there. Y goes up. Now I can work in this section view. But then I'll have to move it again if I go into the different ground plans. I'll have to just move that UCS depending on which part of this drawing I'm working on at any given point in time. Okay. So once you have that, you probably aren't going to use this view. I put this there just because uh, you know, this plaster line, or this line here, is now lined up with the stage level. Just so if you needed to look at it in that view, you could. But you're probably going to use these two. Okay? And you're going to plop these in. Let me give you an example of what this might look like when you're done here. Oops, let's see. Um, do I have that? Maybe I don't. Hang on. I'll do it over here. Somewhere I have it here. Um, I think this is it. Let me make sure. Yes, this is it. Okay. So, um, let me put that in my folder. 
and let you. S I just want you to see what this, what I'm expecting this to look like, kinda. When you do it, alignment four. Okay, let's think. Oops. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it's going to look something kind of like this. Ignore. Okay. So here's the section view. There's the three things in the center cluster. There's the front fill. There's the under balcony. There's the mix fill. There's the balcony fills. So you notice I am giving some reference to the size of these things, but these are not perfectly to scale. Okay, um, so I don't, it's not. I'm not going to measure the size of these boxes as long as the front of them is where they where it's supposed to be. That's the important part. I need to see it. And notice I have the labels, right? But also notice in the section view I can't show all four of the balconies. And I can't show all two of the under balconies just because they are in the same spot on this view. So I can only see one of them. But if you go to the ground plan view, you can see, oh, look, I have two front fills there. Oh, look, I have two under balconies there. And you go to the balcony view, and you say, oh, look, I have four balconies. right? Even though in the section you can only see one. So just keep that in mind when you realize that, oh, these are in the same spot in this view. Uh, like if you look at the center cluster, I, I did I did plot these in the right spot, but then I realized that from that view, they look like one big block. <laughs> so I just drew them like that, one big block, because they overlap when you start looking at them vertically. So it doesn't, it's not super important for purposes of this. I just put the labels in, and I put the aim point, okay? So uh, that's what I'm looking for, is for you to recreate that. I'm not going to give you that visual reference, though, okay? Because I, I don't necessarily want you to just perfectly copy my plot, okay? I want you to take this coordinate information for all these loudspeakers and make me a, a, a ground plan section view loudspeaker plot for those. Because this is the kind of information you would get out of something like Ease or whatever other tool you would get is this amount of detail. And then you have to create the drawing with that information. That's what I want you to do. Any questions about that? Sure. So I'm going to do this uh, center cluster top Q7, OK? So I'm going to go over here, and I'll, I'm going to draw it in section view first. So let me plot my UCS in the right place just to make sure. Plaster line, stage level, there we go. Uh, and let me just drop a point in this spot. So this spot is going to be x 14.6446 so 14.6446 that's right yeah yeah and then comma uh, 39.6097 is that right no it's in our spot there you go. So that is my center cluster top Q7. That's the spot, OK? So uh, let me uh, switch over to, I forgot to make my layer here, sound. And then I'm going to change that color to something else. I like that. And sound. And I'll put this onto that layer. Okay, so now I can draw my box, my rectangle-ish hatchet, solid, there we go. Now I'm going to put it in that spot, and it's not snapping, it's not snapping. Why isn't it snapping? I don't have that particular snap turned on, so let's turn that on. 
This snap is called node. Okay, it's a point that you draw, but it's a node that you snap to. I don't know why, but that's just what somebody in Autodesk decided to call it. All right, so now I can snap to it. See, boom, there it goes. So now I need to know where this thing points. So if I go here, the aim point is 97.4036 on the x, 50.1855 on the z. So let's draw that. So I'm going to draw a point. And what was that? 97.4036. 97.4036, comma, uh, 50.1855. There it is. See it up there? So now all I got to do is I'm going to rotate my box at that base point, and I'm going to snap it to there. And now I draw a line from there to there. Yeah? And then I just have to type the text, you know, using my text styles next to that that says the words center cluster, new line top, new line BNB Q7. No, just in a place where it makes it clear that which one you're talking about, <laughs> right? Well, so that's what I was saying earlier. Sometimes you can go in and sort of draw a reference line here. And then you could do a dimension on that. Uh, so and I would do an angular dimension to here to there. And I could say that's six degrees, right? So you could do that if you want to, but for m for my purposes, I, I don't I don't consider that super important information, just because I have found that when you get in back when you get into the real theater and start doing this, sometimes those angles don't end up being exactly right, but the spot where it has to point never changes, right? Um, it's pointed at the back row of the balcony. Right, and that will always be the case, even if I had to move this thing, this loudspeaker, up a few inches or down a few inches, then that angle might be a little bit different. Okay, so I tend to not. I mean, there are people who really like those to put those little angle dimensions on there. I've just found that it's work that ends up almost always being incorrect <laughs> when you get in, when you get into the space. It's called an angular dimension. Oh, the section view? Section. Yeah. Well, yeah, so now what I would do is I would move my UCS to my new spot in this drawing, and I would just go and grab this thing and then put it just put it here for now. But easiest thing to do would be just to create a, co a construction line from here straight down. Right? And then I know that this thing goes there. And then I can verify that spot. So that is 14.6522. And should be zero on it's like point zero zero two, but that's basically the same thing. Um, in uh, yeah, it's still the same. Oh, it looks like I may have snapped slightly different there. Let's see. Anyway, you could verify that. Uh, but in this case, if you did just copy the symbol, you'd just want to rotate it again. Um, and if you in, if you find yourself in this situation, uh, best thing to do is if you're trying to get a way to get that to be straight, 
is, see how it says down here, my, one of my options is reference? Down here at the, right here. So I would type R for reference. And what is the reference angle? And I would say it is from here to there, the two midpoints, right? And now it's going to rotate based on that. And now I can snap it to that center line and it's, it's flat, OK? Or you could just redraw the box, too. That's fine, too. Whatever you want to do. And then you would find your new spot here, your new aim point that would be in the same approximate place. Uh, but keep in mind that the aim point is really up in the back row balcony. So that might be an argument, you know, like Ryan's question of where do you draw the center cluster, that might be an argument for drawing it over here, since that's where you can get that balcony aim point. Right? Yeah, so these, these are some of the decisions I want you to wrestle with, right? Is I want you to figure out how, what, what would be the clearest way to illustrate this information. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I might have said something about that in, um, yeah, so I said each system should be a different color. And I define system as the center cluster, that's a system. Right, that's three loudspeakers that work together as a system. The front fills, that's a system. So there's two loudspeakers, that's a front fill system. So on, so each of those systems should be within themselves the same color, but they should be a different color from the other systems. So is that sort of just creating a layer on top of other systems? You could do that. You could do a different layer for each system. Uh, or you can go in uh, and have them all in the same layer and just specify a different color for them. So like I could pick this, and instead of the color being, uh, it's probably going to be by layer. Like if I, you know, if I pick that, that color is the hatch is specific, but it should be by layer. Right now it's the same. So you could just go ahead and pick it and say, I want it to be a, a different color. Right. I would advise using any of these default colors. And instead, just go in here and find something interesting. Right? So you could override the layer color that way. Or you could just draw them on a different layer. The nice thing about drawing them on a different layer is then if you decide you don't like, if I tell you then in a first look, I don't like the color of that, change it. You can just change the color of the layer and all of them will change. And you don't have to like go and select each of them. So, but you can choose your own adventure on that one. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I, part of this exercise is I'm, I'm leaving a little bit of this open to interpretation, right? I want to see you wrestle with some of these ideas. Like, okay, where is the clearest place to draw that symbol in this, dr in this drawing, right? Because this is all about clearly communicating your intentions and the plan, okay? So I want to see you think about that kind of stuff. And we might see a few different uh, solutions, right? Some of you will come to different conclusions on these problems than others will. But the important information is, what are the two bits of information that are important? Where does it go? Where does it point? Yep. Where does it go? Where does it point? As long as you have those bits of information, and there's a kind of a third bit of information that is implied, which is, what is it? <laughs> right? <laughs> so where does it go and where does it point implies that I know what it is. OK? And so that's what the label is all about. Because you'll have more than one it in this drawing. Okay, so you gotta be able to differ differentiate them. As long as you solve those things and it's clear, that information is clear, uh, then you'll be fine. Even if you your colors are slightly different from somebody else, or maybe you know you decided to represent them a little bit differently, or you made a, a, a choice about whether which ground plan to put them in. As long as the where does it go, where does it point, and what is it is clear to me, then you're fine. Okay. All right. You've got about 10 minutes if you wanted to kind of just download this file right now and goof around with it a bit. Just make sure there aren't any issues before class is over. Oh, I can do that. 
I can do that. All right, you should be able to see it now. So I would I would advise doing that. Just go ahead and download that that CAD file, open it up, make sure you can navigate it. There's not any issues going on there. And that way you can ask any other questions before we finish up.